Hey guys, welcome back to AWS Hands On. So yeah, in this video, we'll continue from where we left. And in this video, what I'm going to show you is how you can connect your Lambda function to a database. So there are a few prerequisites which I have already done and which you should also do. Uh, the first thing is that you need to create an RDS instance. So if I go into RDS, You can see I have already created one RDS with the name of Lambda test. And what you need to do is you need to grab this connection string. Basically, this is the endpoint of your RDS instance. Okay, the next thing what you need to do before you can go on to Lambda is create an IAM role. So I have already created it. And I'm not covering these things like RDS and IAM in this lecture because we'll have a separate lecture for both of these topics. In fact, a different section. So we'll be covering that in those sections. So if I go to roles, I have a Lambda PPC access role. And if you see, this has AWS Lambda VPC access execution role policy attached to it. So this is what you need to do before you can go on to Lambda. So let's go to Lambda. And in this video, we'll be using CLI. Uh, we'll not be doing anything from the UI and we'll be using CLI. And, and AWS actually has provided a very good, uh, basically a blog for this uh, uh, database connection. So I'm also referring to that blog only. So I'll be using the same code which AWS has used. And I'll be putting in the URL for that blog. Uh, in the description so you can check that out so right now I don't have any function so let's go to CLI and let's create the function so I'm in my CLI now you can see I have a couple of files with me which is an app.py and config.py and there's one thing package so I'll tell you what does this contain and then I have created a zip of these three things already in the app.zip. So let me show you what app.py contains. So this is the code basically, which is doing nothing. It's just connecting to the database, creating a table, inserting some objects, and then getting the objects back. You can see, this is what it is doing, okay? So nothing much. In config.py, So config.py has my database username, password. So I've used password very, uh, in fact, very hard to guess, I would say. And the DB name, which I'll be, I mean, which I'll be creating the tables in and putting the records in. So this is a DB name. So when you go on to create your RDS instance, you can set these things up, right? And you can fetch these values from there. Okay. So this is the information and if I go to CD into packages directory, so you can see there's uh, one, you know, basically a Python module, which I need to use uh, py mysql, which, which if you see in my app.py, you can see I have imported that by MySQL, basically it, this is the AWS code. So AWS have in, imported that. So basically you can do this uh, uh, via two things. You can do a pip install uh, uh, to a packages directory. And then from there you can just zip your uh, packages and your uh, code files into one single archive. Or if you want to do it from console, then there's a thing called layers. So in the console, you can go and create layers and add your dependencies in that layer. And then you can use those layer in your code. So there's a two way of doing it. I'm doing it from CLI. Probably you can take it as a homework to go and do it from the UI. It's pretty simple. You can just, if you see on the left hand side of the console. So I don't have any functions right now. Once the function is there, I will show you. So you can see there's this layers here. 
this currently I don't have any layer but you can go ahead and create your layers and upload basically your either you can upload a zip file like I'll be doing or you can upload from an S3 bucket as well so let's move out of here and let's go to CLI so I have already configured AWS CLI on my system so I can run AWS commands so AWS Lambda and let's see what's there in help. So what I'm looking for is list functions. There it is. Let's start. Just to make sure that my CLI is working, I'm doing a list function. Great, so it's working. So do, I don't have any functions, so it's giving me a blank uh, list basically. Cool, let's move ahead. So this is my AWS command, which I'm using to create a function. So it's pretty straightforward, you can see. So I'm giving a function name, test database connection, a runtime, which I'll be using, the zip file, uh, which is the app.zip which contains my application and the dependencies i'm specifying what is the handler function so handler function name is handler uh, so the role arn so which you can grab from your iam console uh, vpc then the vpc configurations i'm giving so this since i'm using a default since i've created my rds in a default vpc I'm grabbing the subnet IDs of my default uh, VPC and a security group ID as well. So this you can get you can get from VPC console. These things you can get, get from your VPC console. Cool. Let's run this command. And if I haven't done anything wrong, this should work. And looks like this has worked. So you see in my AWS console, in my Lambda console, I can see this function. It has been created. Great, let's go and check it out. And this looks good. My dependencies are also there. Great, so now it's time to test this function. So let's just test this. So this is the AWS command which I'm going to use to invoke my function. And I'll be taking the output of this uh, basically lambda function execution in, in a file called output.txt so i'll know if it fails so there will be error, errors so they will be put into this output.txt and even if it succeeds it will get a success message in this output.txt so let's just run it this is going to take some time so you can see our execution completed it took roughly around 20 seconds so i had to pause the video and you can see this is giving status code of 200 so this is this looks good and if i've i catted out the output.txt and you can see added three items for rds mysql table cool so this looks good uh, one thing you need to make sure before you execute it so which I forgot basically is to increase the timeout because it's by default it's three seconds and three seconds are not enough for your function to invoke and get executed. So the first time it will, if you don't change this to, I mean 30 or at least 20 seconds, you'll get an error that your function timed out. So that thing you need to ensure before you proceed. Okay, so this was, I think, it. This is a very simple way to give access to a database, uh, I mean, to a Lambda function to your database. So I hope you liked the video and let's continue with Lambda in the next video. Thank you for watching, guys.